Hey guys, NCS Fan 001 here, welcoming you to another one of those weekly trophy list update videos. Today's date is Monday, June 1st, 2020. So this will have covered the week of, I think it would be the 25th through the 30th. So, this week was not overly productive in terms of the overall number of trophies, but I'm still pretty happy with what few trophies were accomplished. So, as you can see, I only worked on two games this week, but before I go to that, I uh, want to ask you guys a quick question. I've been logging into Destiny 2 most every week to do stuff every week, like work on the Prophecy tablets, because you have to get either... Raidalorian cultures or fossilized blossoms or paradox amplifiers for the particular triumph I'm going for, which is the destinations one. And all I have left on this one is the destinations for Curse of Osiris, Warmind, and Forsaken. Now, I don't think they look overly, like, troubling overall, but it is taking an extremely long time, and I'm wondering, for anyone who's done this, or is a much, you know, more accomplished Destiny 2 player than I am, is there a different seal that you would recommend me do? Because I'm working on the Destinations one, like I said, it's not, it doesn't seem particularly hard, but it just, it's taken a very long time, and I'm wondering if there might be an easier one, or if there's something I don't even know that might end up making this current one a lot harder. So please let me know if you are experienced with this DLC and this game in general as to what would be the easiest, if I'm already doing the easiest, if there's anything more to worry about with it other than just the grind. And then I still gotta do the raid at some point, but again, this game's not exactly too high on my priority list. I gotta focus on my other stuff right now. So as for the games I earned trophies in, we'll start out with Fallout 76, in which I earned this trophy for completing the Settler questline. It's not difficult. Neither questline is difficult, really, at all. Although I would say it's actually a little bit easier to do the quests if you are lower leveled. As weird as that sounds, unless you have a really overpowered build, if you're lower level, then the enemies scale to you, and they scale to a lower level. To where if you only have, you know, one or two decent legendary weapons, you can really take out everything. So that's honestly really kind of nice to know that you can kind of just take out everything at a low level if you are low level, I mean. So that definitely feels like it makes it easier. So that's just a little something extra for you guys to note if you're just getting started on this game and going for it. I also just finished a trophy guide for the DLC. It's published on PSN Profiles. Uh, I'm definitely proud of that one. That one took quite a bit of effort to get through. But yeah, completing the stories really isn't that difficult or even all that overly time consuming. But you have to get to level 20 to even start it, which takes time, of course. So that's kind of annoying. But, of course, still have to become allies with Foundation. I would estimate that I'm around 45% of the way through Neighborly, which means 55% left of Neighborly, and then I'll have this trophy. It is awful, takes forever. I've complained about this for a few weeks in a row now. The only good thing is there is a reason, there is an incentive to be playing from now until I think June 9th actually, because it's currently Fosnacht week, or Fosnacht week and a half, which was one of the best events in year one, and it's still pretty fun. It's it's pretty easy because, especially because a lot of like high level players will join to play it to farm for the rare masks and stuff and rare plans that only appear at this one time a year, so it's a fun event, and it's pretty easy, plus you get two treasury bonds each time you complete it, and you're guaranteed a legendary weapon, or a legendary piece of armor, so you're guaranteed a legendary upon completing it, though I think that they're all, they've all been pretty bad so far, like, a ghoul, a, a ghoul slayer's pool cue, yeah, that's, that sounds like a great thing, or a hunter's rolling pin, or something completely stupid and useless like that, but it's still, it's a fun event, I like it a lot, it's definitely worth playing if you're picking up the game just now for Wastelanders, but it's definitely a long grind, and I don't know how much longer it's going to take. I estimate that, and part of the problem is, even when you do the Settler quests every day, I've been doing them every single day, and even if you do them probably once a week, you'll have a day where even if you pick the best option for, you know, donating your reward to Foundation, you won't get any reputation for completing it, despite the fact that you also won't get your reward. You still get Treasury Bonds, so it's fine, which is the only thing I actually care about, but you don't, you still don't get your reward, but it also doesn't give you a reputation boost. At least it doesn't seem to, unless it's doing it in the background and not showing it, which I'd be surprised if it is. So, yeah, that's absolutely horrible. And also, the photo opportunity quest, I've learned, is really not worth it because you 
the amount of reputation is so minuscule it like doesn't even move the bar so it's not even worth the extra effort uh, at least if you're going to do it in that sense it might be worth it to some people to still sell the photos back to davenport but that's about it so i'm going to continue working on this i don't know how much longer it's going to take like i said at least probably a couple more weeks unfortunately it just sucks it's such a grind it's so boring it, it's just awful shouldn't be there <laughs> Uh, but anyway, then we have Borderlands Game of the Year Edition 100% complete. Finally, after a full year, this game is done and it is permanently 100% completed. I am so happy about that. So since we only had these two games this week, I'll go ahead and look back through the whole list real quick and update everyone on all that. So you had to complete all the missions in the game to get these few trophies you basically had to complete all the missions that was not really difficult because borderlands 1 is actually the easiest game in the franchise to platinum because there's no raid boss in the base game and the game's honestly just really easy the final boss is really easy and you can get really over leveled and overpowered quite easily it's definitely the easiest game to platinum the dlc is a bit of a different story though not as much for difficulty uh, this one you have to jump on an enemy to death this one you have to use like all the different elemental weapons or all the different manufacturers or something these five are the bosses or actually no, all of those are the bosses so you have to defeat all the bosses which is unmissable uh a short speed run trophy for a racing thing that you can do it's easy uh any elemental artifact that's unmissable reach level 50 i think there's a level 50 trophy in here somewhere yep there it is reach level 50 uh that's not too difficult you can either do it in the true vault hunter mode once you finished all the dlcs and stuff or you can just do it in the normal mode and just grind xp easily at the what is it the iridian promenary it's like the last section before you fight the final boss because each enemy there gives you just a ton of xp so it's very easy to level up fast there so don't worry too much about leveling up it's not really difficult at all discover all the locations that's not difficult you can just look up a guide for each location if you are having trouble finding it uh, and a lot of them are unmissable story related anyway uh run over 25 enemies with vehicles that's easy five rack in under 10 seconds that's pretty hard to miss earn a total of a million dollars that's not going to be a problem you're gonna have more than enough sell guns simple enough uh, this is a co-op trophy. You have to have another player. They can either be a second controller or another online player and emerge victorious from an arena match against them. Very easy. Win a duel against another player. Again, it can be two controllers. Same with this one. Uh, these two are also co-op trophies that take a little bit longer. You have to complete a total of 15 missions in co-op and you have to kill one of the game's main bosses in co-op. Now, none of these are difficult but they do take just a little bit of time because you do have to have a co-op partner for them and they are both technically missable so you can do it with two controllers though just stick a second controller in and just complete like the first 15 missions and the first boss fight is an easy way to do it so don't worry too much about that it's not going to be much of an issue i think i actually did this one i might have been working on this one like right when the game came out on the first stream i did of it or something i don't know then this one this used to be a viral trophy it, you had to play with someone that already had the trophy or a gearbox employee online but they thankfully changed it to where you just have to play with at least two other players i think it just means being a lobby with a total of three people and that can either be three controllers or it can be one or it can be two controllers and another player online or three total players online pretty easy nothing to worry about as long as you have people to play with uh, level 10 proficiency with a weapon is pretty much unmissable this one you just have to go to a certain location uh this is another co-op trophy just win the duel without taking damage again you can just easily boost it with a friend it's not difficult at all get kills with each type of weapon that's extremely easy a class mod is pretty much unmissable uh this one is technically missable because you can drop or sell the inventory upgrades but most people probably won't end up doing that so you should be okay you have to get kills with each action skill these are the final four trophies which means you do have to get to level five as each character so it's not difficult it just does require a little bit of extra time most people like to play as either lilith the siren or roland the soldier i feel like are the better two characters in this game i don't really have much experience with the berserker or with the hunter which are brick and mordecai respectively so i don't have a whole lot of experience with them now a nice thing about this game though is if you import your save from ps3 you then you can end up just doing like one requirement for some of these trophies to automatically unlock them like the mission ones i think will do that the leveling one i think will do that 
I can't remember exactly what they are, so definitely check out like the forums on PSN profiles for exact information on that, but you can auto-pop a lot of those trophies, which does make life a little bit easier if you import a character. The Zombie Island of Dr. Ned, this DLC is very, very easy. It, can, it takes three to four hours, as you can see here. I did all the trophies in one day, so 8.50 p.m. to 11.02, so it only took like a little over two hours to get all the trophies in this DLC. Plus, they all actually auto-pop if you load in a an imported character. All the trophies in this one auto-pop for some reason, which is kind of weird, but pretty nice. You know, easy. <laughs> Uh, the only one, though, that is a little more time-consuming if you're doing everything legitimately is this one, the Brains mission, as you have to collect and bring back a bunch of Brains to Undead TK. It's not difficult. Uh, we'll skip Mad Moxie for now because, well, reasons. Secret Armory of General Knox. This one's a fun DLC, but it does take longer. You get three trophies here for completing the DLC. Those are unmissable. Then you have to kill Cromorax. He is the raid boss of this DLC and the only raid boss in Borderlands 1. He's not one of the easier raid bosses in the franchise, especially if you're trying to solo him. But if you're playing in co-op, it's really not that bad, especially if someone in the lobby has a modded weapon brought over from PS3. It's extremely easy. It's nothing really to worry about if you do it that way. I'm sure you can find people to help you on PSN profiles. I did it with a random... I don't even think he had a modded weapon, but he just was real good at the game. And we were able to, you know, work together and kill him. But I don't think he actually had a... A modded weapon in that one which was surprising there's four loot midgets they're all pretty easy to find uh this one's pretty easy you just have to destroy one of the lancers while using the racer car which is a weaker car you have to reach level 61 so two more leveling trophies you can use the same methods for xp grinding as the base game or if you won't you can grind this out by fighting Cromorax because he spawns a lot of little minions that give you a ton of xp you have to complete all side missions and story missions which includes killing Cromorax here uh, unfortunately, this trophy is known to glitch on some people, so be kind of careful when you're doing this one. Make sure after every mission that you see it appear in the mission completed section. I think it has something to do with doing the missions where you get to loot the armory a couple extra times. I think that's what causes the problem, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And then finally, you have to pay for a worthless tour of the world's largest bullet, which costs around $9 million, so that's really stupid. So I would recommend... Uh, backing up your save before doing it, then pay for the tour, and then reload your previous save. I would recommend doing that so you don't waste all your money. Claptrap DLC. This one is awful if you're not importing a character because you do get these first few trophies here. These four are all story-related trophies that can't be missed. Nothing to worry about with those. They're all like in the final mission together, though. That's why they're all so close together. Uh, find the six Claptrap statues. That's pretty easy. You can just look up a guide for their locations. Uh, but then you have to do these collectible trophies. This one requires you to find a whole bunch of old Claptrap parts, which isn't too difficult, but it takes some time. It's these here that are the real problem. You have to collect 25 oil cans, 15 bobbleheads, three 3D, or five 3D glasses, three pairs of panties, five fish in bags, and 15 pizzas. These are items that randomly drop from enemies that you kill within the DLC, and it's completely random as to whether or not you even get one, and then it's even more random as to which one you actually get. So it's a completely random luck-based series of trophies. Thankfully, you can farm them quite easily in the final boss fight by just killing the clap traps that spawn infinitely from the big interplanetary assassin clap trap guy. So that's the easiest way to do it. It's not like like I said, it's not that difficult. It just takes a really long time. It's really boring. But I think if you import your save, you can actually auto-pop these trophies, like collect one of each and it auto-pops it. So I think that's how it is. I'm not, again, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I like to think that's probably true and that would make life a lot easier if I had known that at the time. But, you know, it's whatever. It's still, the game is a little bit easier than on the PS3 version because the enemies don't refill their health if you die during most of the boss fights, which makes the game a little bit easier. Mad Moxie's underground shit stain on the Borderlands franchise is what I will call this DLC. It is awful for a number of reasons. I mean, for one, it's horribly broken on PS4, but even if it wasn't broken, it still takes way too much time. Now, the three lesser challenges are easy. Finish 25 rounds of 25 waves, five total rounds of enemies in each of the three Coliseums. It takes around 45 minutes per Coliseum. Nothing difficult there. It's not going to give you any trouble. Because you can use a method for this DLC. Basically, you load into the DLC 
with a character that is a level 11 or below, 11 or below, and have them be the main character, then you spawn in with your character on the second controller and join that game, and then have the first controller activate all the missions in their save file, and that means that all of the Colosseum challenges will be scaled to player 1's level, meaning all the enemies will be around level 12, and if your main character is, you know, a level 50 or even, you know, a level 60 or even a level 69, then they're basically unbeatable because they're going to kill everything in one or two hits and you're not going to die from anything. So that's what makes this even bearable at all is that you can do it that way. The problem is that you have to survive 100 waves, a total of 20 rounds in each Colosseum, which is terrible because that takes around three hours per Colosseum. And that is, of course, provided that the game doesn't glitch on you, because ever since this came out, and you have heard me rant and be angry about this numerous times in the past, because it's just so screwed up. Basically, when you play these, when you get to the last few rounds, so the last, like, probably three to four rounds, the game becomes insanely prone to crashing because of the amount of body parts on screen, as well as possibly through fast traveling, like if your co-op partner goes down and goes up to the penalty box could also be a part of it. Now, you can mitigate this to some degree by using fire and corrosive weapons and playing as Lilith because of her siren abilities that also do something like that. So you can mitigate the risks a bit by doing it that way, but that's still no guarantee that you're going to be able to beat it. Now, when I did these, I did the goalie a long time ago, and I did manage to beat it on my first try without the game crashing during the fight. It crashed on the fast travel screen out, but I already had the trophy, so it was okay. Uh, as for the Helberbia, this one, the first time I did it, it crashed on me on round 20, wave 3. I was less than 5 minutes from being done, and it crashed. So I was not happy about that at all, because if it crashes, you have to start all over again. Uh, the second time I did it, I think I did better, though, with using the fire weapons and stuff. I guess I used them even more and just got a little bit luckier with melting the bodies and stuff, so I was able to get it. And then the Angelic Ruins. Uh, I was very nervous about this one because it looked like it was going to crash in the last round or two. It, it wanted to crash in those last couple rounds. It was slowing down. It was chugging along. It was not good, but thankfully for this one, I got a friend online that had a modded weapon, so... We were able to do the round skip glitch, which is where you shoot the boss, like, as the instant they spawn in. And if you time it just right on certain bosses, it'll skip the next round. So we did that about, it worked about five times for us. So we were able to skip, like, five rounds out of it. So it shortened the time by a lot. And it also means that there were less enemies on the field to destroy. Because as long as you're still using fire weapons and stuff otherwise, you don't have to worry about anything. Because you can melt a lot of the body parts and there's fewer enemies on screen in the first place. So I highly recommend finding someone that has a modded weapon that can do the round skip glitch for this DLC. Because the trophies do not auto-pop. Well, that's not entirely true. The gold trophy will auto-pop if you finish it on PS3, but the silver trophies will not. So do keep that in mind. So you finish one larger challenge on this version with your PS3 character will pop the gold trophy. Which is nice because this one can glitch out on you if you do it with multiple characters. Like if you play with multiple characters on multiple playthroughs to try to do all these trophies, it can glitch on you. And that's about the last thing you want to deal with. But thankfully... Borderlands Game of the Year Edition, 100% complete, never have to touch it again, off my list. Uh, that is, what, 19 games left, I think? Yeah, I think only 19 games left to finish, and then Fallout 76 will put it down to 18. So, we are making a bit of progress, which is awesome. So, yeah, anyway, with that... We are at level 74, 3%, 18,384 total trophies, 438 platinums, 2,504 golds, 4,835 silvers, 10,607 bronzes. So, plans for the upcoming week. Of course, I will continue to work on Fallout 76, grinding away for reputation for the settlers, as well as playing Fosnock Day, because I've gotten a couple of the semi-rare of the headgear, like the masks and stuff. I've gotten some of the semi-rare ones, but I haven't gotten any of the, like, really rare ones yet, so I'd love to be able to get a couple of them. 
that'd be kind of cool like the death claw mask and such because not many people have them where you can probably trade them for a good amount of caps in the game once the player vending if it ever comes back online so that's that so that's the main thing i'll be working on along with call of duty ghosts should be here in the next day or two it better be here and it better work this time or i'm going to be very pissed off because i gotta get that stupid game done because killzone mercenary servers temporarily went down for like three days out of absolutely nowhere with no notice and i mean i know that that was a vita game and it wasn't a call of duty game but you know that again makes me worry you know how long until this ps3 stuff starts really going down forever and can't do it anymore I mean, I guess theoretically everything left in Call of Duty Ghosts, I think I could technically do solo if it ever came down to it, but it's not something I'd ever want to try to do because it would be awful. So I want to get hopefully started on that this week. That's definitely my main cleanup operation for now. Other than that, in Fallout 76, I'm probably going to get started on The Division 2 within the next week or so. And Star Wars Battlefront 2 is going to be one of the free PS Plus games, which is awesome because I just said that I wanted to actually do it because I want to get both the Battlefront games and both the Division games done at some point because that would be kind of cool. Especially since there will probably someday be a Battlefront 3. There might be a Division 3. I don't know yet. But whatever happens, it's definitely something that I would like to do. So I'll be getting started on Battlefront for sure because I know it's not really that hard of a Platinum. It's just really grindy for the XP and you have to boost like two of the Fighter Assault trophies, but everything else is pretty easy. So looking forward to playing it though. It looks like it's gotten a lot better. Division 2 I know is better received than the original Division, so I actually am kind of looking forward to that. I think it should be kind of fun. And everyone's told me that for the DLCs, the raid isn't really anything to worry about because you can do it on easy as long as you know, as long as everyone on the team has some clue of how to play the game. And if the Warlords in New York isn't any harder than the Raids, so that's... All, overall, the game will be like a 4 out of 10, which isn't too bad. Just real time-consuming, though. It's going to take a very long time to get through. But anyway, that's the other goal for this week. Now, I do have one other major update, though, is that if everything works out correctly, I'm going to be starting a new job, like, by the middle to end of this week. And it pays pretty good for being what seems like relatively easy work, so that's good. The problem is that it is a second shift position. Now, it's only a temporary job. It's only a three-month position related to coronavirus. But it's only for three months, but it is second shift of 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Friday. So that means that streaming schedule and even uploading schedule is going to have to get switched around. It shouldn't affect the uploads. It just means the uploads will probably come out in the mornings instead of at night. Or they'll come out really, really late at night, one or the other. But I'll still be doing videos. That's not going to be a problem. But streams are going to be a lot more inconsistent. Saturday night drunk streams will become the one drunk stream of the week. And the rest of the week, I'll hopefully be able to do like one or two other streams on like a day during the week. So that'll be good for all my uh, UK and other European viewers because apparently I have a lot of them, which is kind of cool. Never thought I'd have like as many European viewers as US viewers, it seems like, which is kind of cool. So we'll see what happens with that, though. Uh, that's provided I don't get one of my other opportunities coming through within the next couple days, because if that were to happen, it would be like a more traditional thing. So with that, be patient with me if uploading schedule and stuff is a little bit less consistent for the next so amount of time. But otherwise, I'll still be gaming whenever I have the chance. And I mean, this that position fits fine with my sleep schedule. I already, you know, go to bed at like midnight and get up at like 10 in the morning, so... It already pretty much fits my schedule, so it's not really a change for me. So, thank you guys for tuning into this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And see you this week for some more videos. Hopefully at least one, well, at least one stream. Hopefully more than one. And continued work on those other games. And I really gotta actually grab like 11 Platinums in three weeks. Yeah, I have three weeks to get 11 Platinums before Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom comes out because I want that to be number 450. So yeah, I think I'll maybe go back and clean up a few of my easy Platinums because I got a few Rattle Lake of games I can do. So we'll see about that. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in and see you later this week.